the masking transition, it's just, it's just so sweet. It's so beautiful. Now we see this transition everywhere, from YouTube videos, and to TV shows. Pretty much everybody loves this transition because it looks just so cool. It's the one transition you should know how to do. People like Sam Colder and J.R. Ali, these guys are just known for it on YouTube. Especially Sam Colder, it's just like his master transition. He's always using it, it's always looking beautiful. The meaningful things I've created were fueled by that brief moment of inspiration. Just so sweet. Let's just jump into DaVinci Resolve and make it. First, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be updated on the newest videos put out and to stay part of the conversation. First thing we are going to do right now is we're going to open DaVinci Resolve 16. So now we have our project. What we're going to do is we're going to actually import all the media that we want. If you want to try this, but you don't have a clip that works, in the description below, I have a link to my Google Drive that has these clips to download in there. So just go below, click it, download it, and open up DaVinci Resolve. Now that we have the clips in our project, you just drag them both here. We're going to find the section that we want to cover our mask. So I actually see it way at the end, right? You can see it starting to move in front of it. There's the pole. There, it wipes right across. To do this transition successfully, you need a clip that has an object move in front of it all the way across the frame, and it's from top to bottom and it goes all the way from left to right or right to left or from any other angle. You just need to fully wipe across the screen. So now that we have that, I'm just going to move back here a little and I'm gonna ripple edit. Remove everything else that I don't want. So I'm just gonna remove the audio because you don't really need that. I'm gonna take this, our first clip, and I'm gonna move it up to video layer two. So now it's on top. And I'm gonna take our second clip and it's on video layer one now. So now that we have our clips where we want them, stacked on top of one another, we're gonna go over here into the color tab. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to right click, hit add alpha output. Without this, your mask will not show up at all. It'll be awful, you, you, it won't even look like you did anything. So you need this alpha output activated. Grab the line right here, connect it. So now you have your alpha output activated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this pen tool right here and we're gonna actually hit the that mask button right here that it actually masks out everything you want it to. Now you're gonna actually see what you're masking out. So I'm just gonna move over here to the beginning of my timeline and for a better view because honestly, look at this, this, this sucks. I'm gonna click this button right here. It extends it. So now I see all, I see my whole picture and I can zoom in a little more with my scroll wheel. So it starts right here. The next frame, it's gonna start and it's gonna be great. And we're on the road to epicness, but you need to start keyframing. Under corrector one, hit the diamond button, the keyframe button. So we're gonna draw our mask right here. Just a square, that's all I do. I'm gonna move it right around that. And then I'm gonna to go to the next frame. I'm gonna start moving my mask, making it work. And now we see on the left, our next clip coming in. So I'm gonna go through this process over and over and over again. I'm gonna speed this part up because it's a little boring and you don't really wanna watch it, but you guys get the point. So now that we see it's pretty much exit the frame, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna finish up this last little section right here and boom, we're done. So what it looks like right now, it's not bad, but we can make it better. So what we can do to make this little line a little less harsh is we can actually add some softness to it. I don't wanna to add too much because it'll start bleeding over into the image. Like, look at that, that doesn't look good. You see like the opacity, you can see the, you can see the other clip inside of it, and we don't want that. What we want is we want just a little softening of the edges. So I think about three is good. I think three is good. So, I'm gonna run back, jump back to the edit tab. We just see it kind of go through. And it looks all right. It's not bad, right? It's not, it's not bad, it's not good though. I wouldn't use it in a video. But we can make this transition look way better. All we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start using some time remapping. We're gonna add a time ramp right into this and make the transition go faster. To do some time remapping, we're actually gonna right click on the clip that we want to time remap and we do retime controls or control R, but I, I, I just like this better. 
You see this drop down area here? Well, we're gonna get to the point where you want to add it, right? Because we start right there, you see our pole starting to come in. We're gonna add a speed point. So now that it starts right there, we're gonna take this right here and we're gonna change the speed. Now let's just say like, crap, let's move it up to 400%. It's not bad. It's a nice wipe, it's quick. In my mind, 400% is just a little too fast. It's a little too like, whoa. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm actually gonna add another speed point. Now that we have two with 400%, I'm gonna grab this speed point and I'm actually gonna extend it a little. So let's say 340%. That seems nicer, I, I like that. So one of the things you're kind of seeing in this clip is a little of the wobble. We're gonna make this look better by hitting the stabilization and stabilize it. It's super fast, it's so much better than Premiere Pro in my mind, it just crops right in and it looks nice. Now you have stable footage. You're gonna do the same thing for the bottom one and there it is. We got that looking all nice right there. So it's better than it was, but now what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go and edit the curves a little. We're gonna make it curvy. To edit the time curves, we're gonna hit right click, I'm gonna go retime curve, and then we're gonna go to this little drop down area. We're gonna go all the way down. It says retime frame. Well, I don't want that. Heck with that. I wanna retime speed. Now that we see that we have our whole speed ramp, our whole curve, well, we wanna make this curvy. So click on it and hit this. And now we see these little handles pop up. How fast do we want it? Do we want it subtle? I like this right here. We got our little curve going on, moving up, it's smooth. So now we have a, that, we're just gonna close this out because we don't need it anymore. And we're gonna add one more thing. It's looking good so far, right? You could use this in a video. I just want the whole thing to be blurred, right? I just wanna blur right across it all. I've seen people do this in many other ways. They'll just go and blur, the, blur one clip, blur the other clip, but I say, kinda screw that. I wanna add an adjustment clip. So go to, effect, go to the effects library, go down to effects, and then you see adjustment clip, and just drag it on top. I'm gonna go to the color, and I wanna see everything right now, so I'm gonna click this. Now we see that we have our adjustment layer right here in the mini timeline. We're just gonna go over and hit open FX, go to directional blur, grab it, drag it on there. What I like to do is I like to see which way it's going. So right now you see that it's kind of going up. Well, I don't want that. I want the blur to be going this way. So it looks like it's moving sideways. Now, so it's all the way to zero. Now I'm just gonna bring it all the way down because I actually don't want that right now. So I'm going to actually keyframe the blur effect. I'm just gonna move along halfway and add some blur in there. And then once we go all the way to the side, I'm just gonna drag it down again. So let's look at this. It looks nice right there. It's just quick, there's a little blur, not too much. It's got that nice soft edges and it's great. So there it is. There's the masking effect that you see in Sam Colder's videos and in J.R. Alley's videos, and it's ultimately just broken down. And from there, you can just add more things and you can customize it in any way you want. But here is here it is. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna learn more effects in DaVinci Resolve that you see professionals use. And I just wanna say, Thank you guys so much. We just hit 200 subscribers on this channel. That's, that's freaking ridiculous. Like I started this five weeks ago, I think. So like mind equals blown. Like I'm so freaking psyched. So you guys are awesome. I just, I really appreciate you guys. I really appreciate all the love, all the support, all the comments, and you guys are awesome. So anyway, you guys know the drill. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Until the next one, peace.